All right, let's go ahead and get started today. This is our 75 minute all levels flow. Uh, we are commemorating Martin Luther King um, Jr. today. So for practice, um, for props, you'll need a strap. You can use a belt or a bathrobe strap, um, two blocks, and you might like to have a blanket as well. I sent out a playlist and if you like um, to practice with music, you are welcome to uh, hit play on that now. And we will go ahead and get started. We're gonna be begin today lying down on our backs, feet planted on the mat. And you might like to have your strap nearby so it's within easy reach. Lowering down onto the back. Feet are firmly planted on the earth. And you might let the palms just gently roll open facing the sky. If it's comfortable, you can gently slowly close the eyes, beginning to tune inward, letting go of whatever happened before this moment today and drawing our awareness into our yoga practice. Let's draw a deep breath in through the nose and just sigh it out. Find some relaxation and softening. Another breath like that. Big inhale. If it feels good to stretch on that inhale, do that. And then exhale, letting it go. And then we'll find our ujjayi yogic breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Drawing the breath toward the roof of the mouth for an audible ocean sound. You might place hands on the belly or one on the belly and one over the heart. Helping to feel the physical sensation of inhalation and exhalation. Inhaling drawing the breath down into the belly, expanding the belly, feeling it rise, and exhale, feeling it drop toward the spine. Breathing here, press into the feet and gently tuck the tailbone and feel the lumbar spine connect to the mat. From here, you can open the arms into a T or cactus shape taking a big breath into the front body, into the heart space. Exhale, letting that go. And then we'll inhale, lengthening feet toward the front of the mat, arms overhead. Really take up some space here. You might rotate the wrists and ankles if that feels good. And then draw one knee in toward the chest and then the other curling up in a ball. Slowly dropping the head back down. Maybe rocking side to side for a little massage. <clears throat> Feeling our connection and support of the ground below us. From here, you'll inhale and as you exhale, Gently let the knees fall to the left. It can be nice to use a block here between the legs at the beginning of practice for a little support. The right arm extends to the right. Deep breath in. Slow breath out. We'll inhale, bringing the knees to center, keeping the block between them if you have it. And as you exhale, let the knees fall to the right, taking that twist to the other side. Left arm extends long, the gaze might follow. Deep breath in, slow breath out.
And then we'll inhale, coming back to center, planting both feet on the mat. You can remove the block. We're gonna take the strap here <clears throat> and interlace the strap around the ball of the right foot. Press that foot toward the sky. You're holding the strap with both hands here. And if it's comfortable, extend the left leg down the length of the mat, toes pointing to the sky. Let's breathe here into this gentle hamstring stretch. The leg might be bent if you have tight hamstrings this morning, that's fine. Relaxing the jaw, the neck and shoulders. Breathing here. As you exhale, you might gently draw the leg closer to the body, deepening the stretch. And then gently release, bringing the foot back to center. Inhaling here, take the strap in the left hand, right hand comes to the right hip. And we're gonna send the, the right leg across the body, coming into a spinal twist with a straight leg. So the right leg extends across the body. Plant the left elbow on the mat for support. If this is too intense, you can simply release the strap and bend the right leg, holding it here across the body. And the right arm can extend. Today during practice, we'll be working towards rotated half moon pose which is very similar to this shape, but will be standing. This shape asks us to find balance, connection to the earth and extension. So feeling some lightness and lift, openness and possibility while we still feel rooted. On the next inhale, let's bring that leg back to center, release the strap, and we'll circle out the ankle here. Bend the knee and extend the leg, planting right foot on the mat. And then we'll take the left leg, bend it toward the body, loop the strap around the ball of the left foot, extending that foot toward the sky clasping the strap with both hands. And if it feels safe, extending right leg down the length of the mat, toes pointing toward the sky. Pressing the low back into the mat, relaxing jaw, neck and shoulders, breathing into this hamstring stretch. And if it's comfortable, maybe drawing the leg closer to the body to deepen the stretch. It's fine to have a gentle bend in the knee or a deep bend if you've got tight hamstrings. If you don't have a strap, you can be holding behind the thigh or calf. And then we'll inhale back to vertical. Take the strap in the right hand, left hand comes to the left hip. And we'll cross this leg across the body, rolling onto our right hip, landing the right elbow on the mat. So we're in a spinal twist with an extended, with both legs extended. If this is too intense, just let go of the strap, bend the left leg and hold it there or use your block for support. You might extend the left arm. Breathing here. in commemoration of MLK today, I'm going to invite you to imagine a dream for the future. Whatever that means to you in this moment, Martin Luther King was a civil rights leader who was able to really envision a new version of his world the world at the time and move toward that vision through nonviolence. So 
So you might meditate today or focus on a dream for your future and what that might be. On the inhale, let's send the foot back vertical. You can plant the right foot here on the mat and let's roll the um, left ankle out. <clears throat> we can remove the strap, keep it nearby. And then let's reach both feet toward the mat, extending arms overhead and interlacing fingers behind the head. And you can choose to keep the head planted here or lifted. We'll inhale and as we exhale, lower the right foot slowly down to hover a few inches above the earth. Inhale, sending it to the sky. Exhale, slowly lowering left leg to a few inches above the mat and then switch. So moving with your breath, moving between the right and left legs, doing these scissor kicks to wake up the core. We'll do one more on each side. And then release the head down, draw the knees into the chest, Hands behind the knees will rock up and back three times, coming to rest on our tailbones at the top. Finding boat pose here, legs can be down or parallel to the mat. Chest is lifting, heart is lifting. Arms can extend forward if that feels safe. And if you wanna try a challenge, you can loop the strap around the balls of the feet and extend the feet straight, holding against the bind here. The core is engaged. You want the shoulders rolling down the back. So you should not have a rounded back. That's gonna make balance hard. We want a flat back, three breaths. Imagining what that dream for our future is and really giving it shape. On the next exhale, we'll slowly release the feet down, coming to Varasana, hero pose. So I like to sit on a block in hero pose. We're up on our knees, bent knees here, lengthening the spine, breathing deeply. As you exhale, let the right ear gently drop to the right, and then we'll make circles with the head just waking up the neck. Three in one direction, and then three in the other direction. Pausing, if there's an area that really wants some extra love. And then coming to center, let's extend the arms wide, and we're gonna do some um, wrist circles, so make fists with the hands and we'll rotate the wrists, floating the arms at shoulder height. The spine is long here and we're gently tucking the tailbone, trying to take the arch out of the low back. Change the rotation of the wrists, the direction. And then we'll pause. And now let's take that rotation into the elbows. So we'll, we're making circles with the forearms three in one direction, and then three in the other direction. Just lubricating our joints this morning. From here, we'll bring hands to shoulders and bring the rotation into the shoulders. So use the elbows to draw circles. Forward, up, and back. Forward, up, and back. And then change the direction of that rotation, finding a full range of motion. And if you find stiffness or sensitivity, just be kind. Don't force any movement that feels uncomfortable. When, you're, when you've completed your circles, let's drop the hands down, lengthen the spine, inhale, reaching the arms out and up to the sky. Deep breath in, lengthening the ribs away from the hips. The gaze can be high, 
You might keep the eyes open or maybe you close them to help envision a new future, a bright future. On the next exhale, let's drop the right arm down, reach the left arm over, gazing up toward the sky, pressing into the earth to find length in the side body. And then as you exhale, roll the torso toward the mat and let's sweep the left arm forward and around, planting it to the left, sweeping right arm forward and around to the left and then we'll roll open into a side body stretch on the left side. Pressing into the earth to find length in the intercostal muscles between the ribs. And then we'll roll the torso down, forward, and come all the way up. Before we exhale, planting hands in front of us, removing the block. We'll come to tabletop, pressing feet into the mat, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. From here, as you inhale, press the back toward the sky, cat pose. Exhale, cow. Move between knees at your own pace, pressing all 10 toenails into the mat. That helps give us the appropriate rotation for the legs to provide a space for the sacral spine. And then we'll find neutral, separate the sit bones and press the, back, press the tailbone toward the back of the mat, lengthening the arms forward, coming into child's pose, dropping the head down. The third eye space makes contact with the mat. Your arms can be extended forward or they can be behind you, palms face up. And you find a comfortable position for the legs. The knees might be wide and toes coming together. You can try how that feels. I find that's a nice way to make space for my belly to expand on the inhales. This is our resting pose and I invite you to come here anytime that you need a rest or an opportunity to return to your breath or your intention for practice. On the next inhale, let's press ourselves up to tabletop, tuck the back toes and find downward facing dog. Feet are hips distance, hands are shoulder distance, middle fingers point straight forward. You can bend and flex into one leg and the other. Energetically, we are spinning our palms inward toward one another, and that helps us spin the muscles and bones of the arms in a way that helps protect the back. Likewise, the feet are energetically, the heels are energetically pressing away from one another. Breathing here, on the inhale, let's lift the heels high. Exhale, bend the knees deeply. Inhale, pressing the mat away, finding length. Exhale, drop the heels down. Spinning shoulders away from the ears. Breathing. We'll look to the top of the mat and take small steps to the top. Folding here, deep bend in the knees, holding opposite elbows, ragdoll pose. You might lift the 10 toes and then release them one at a time, gripping the mat with the feet and then nod the head, no and yes, releasing any tension. Let's release the arms down and as we inhale, slowly roll the body all the way up. The head is the last thing to rise, shoulders rolling back, palms face forward. We have a gentle tuck in the tailbone here to engage the core that's going to protect our spine throughout practice. From here, let's inhale, reaching up to the sky, breathing here. And as we exhale, swan dive, sending the heart forward, tailbone back, all the way to the ground, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, halfway lift, tailbone reaches back, crown of the head reaches forward, so the gaze is low. And as we exhale, fold again. On the inhale, step the left foot back, drop the knee down. You might like to pad the knee with a blanket or double up the mat. And as we inhale, hands come to hips, press into the feet and rise. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. From here, as we inhale, sweep the arms forward and up. The gaze might lift or be straight ahead. You find what feels good. Breathing here, three breaths. Stretching into the hip flexor, flexors, building strength. And then as you exhale, reach forward toward the mat. You might use your blocks here on either side of the ankle and we're gonna straighten into this right leg. This is modified split. Breathing here, three breaths. And then we'll bend into the right leg. From, uh, take the blocks to the sides, plant the hands, and we'll send the right foot back so the right knee meets the left. From here, we roll fo forward, shoulders over wrists to modified plank, keeping the bum in line with the shoulders and ankles. So we're in one long plank, core is engaged. Inhale, as you exhale, slowly lower all the way down to the belly. Send the legs back, roll the shoulders back. And on an inhale, we're gonna press head, neck, floor, shoulders up. This is low cobra. As you exhale, press into the hands, coming to down to child's pose before tucking toes, lifting hips, downward facing dog. That is our modified vinyasa. And anytime I cue a vinyasa, you're welcome to take that version. From here on an inhale, let's lift the right leg to the sky, flex the toes and make sure the toes are pointing to the mat. And then we'll inhale, lifting that foot higher, really feeling the extension, pressing into the hands. As you exhale, keep this shape with the body and just bend the right knee, drawing the right knee to the chest. Inhale, lengthen toward the sky, exhale, knee to chest, last, Last one, inhale toward the sky, exhale, knee to chest. And now let's roll forward to our plank shape and then step the right foot forward, dropping the left knee down and untucking toes. You can set up the blocks again. And this, this time we'll reach the right arm forward and up coming to a twist. Breathing here. This is a modified rotated side angle pose. And you might um, make some big circles with the arm here, just waking up the shoulder. And then we'll pause, inhale, exhale, arms down, inhale back to Anjaneyasana, low lunge. One breath here. And then let's lower the arms to the blocks, extending into this right leg, modified split drawing the right leg back energetically, keeping the back flat and breathing. And then we'll bend into the right foot, send the blocks to the side of the mat. We'll tuck the back toes and we're gonna step the left foot back to meet the right. Inhale to a halfway lift, exhale, fold deeply. Let the head be heavy. Send the tailbone to the sky and breathe. Soft bend in the knees. On the inhale, we'll rise up, reverse swan dive, leading with the heart. Hands to the heart, samastiti. Okay, other side. Inhale, reaching out and up. Exhale, swan dive, heart forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, extending the spine long. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, step the right foot back, dropping right knee down, untuck toes. Plant your blocks, framing the ankle. 
and we'll bring hands to hips, inhaling up to our Anjaneyasana low lunge. You can roll the shoulders back here to find some space in the heart. You might even release the hands behind you and see if you can interlace. Deep breath in. Maybe you gaze toward the sky. And then let's reach the arms up before we reach them down to the blocks, pressing into the left leg, finding length. This is our modified split. Flat back, breathing here. Core is engaged. What is our dream for the future? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? On the inhale, bend into the left leg. Let's remove the blocks from the mat, plant the hands and send the left foot back. So the knees come together at hips distance for our modified plank. So we're in modified plank, inhale, exhale all the way to the belly. Inhale, rolling shoulders back, plugging the hips into the mat, low cobra, maybe a deeper back bend this time. Exhale, pressing back first through child's pose, and then we tuck toes and lift hips, downward facing dog. On the inhale, the left leg rises, lifting it toward the sky, flex the toes to ensure that the toes point down to get the correct hip rotation here. And then we can point and lift that left foot high. As you exhale, keep this shape and bend the left knee, drawing it toward the chest. Inhale, lifting foot high. Exhale, knee to chest. Inhale, lift. Last one, exhale, knee to chest. And then we'll roll forward to a plank shape before we plant the left foot between the um, hands. Drop the right knee, untuck toes. Frame the, fo the foot with our blocks. From here, we'll inhale, reaching left arm forward and up for that twist. This is supported or modified rotated side angle pose. Breathing here, finding length across the chest, the sternum. The gaze can be high at the left hand. Full deep breaths into the belly. And then you might rotate this arm. Breathing here, inhale. Exhale, reaching forward and down, then press into the legs, coming all the way up to our low lunge. One breath here, pressing down through the legs, lifting through the heart and ribs. Exhale, hands to the blocks, lengthen into the left leg, modified split. We'll inhale, bending into the left leg, removing the blocks, keeping them nearby. Hands come to the mat, tuck the back toes. We take a big step forward to the top of the mat. Inhale here, halfway lift, lengthen spine. Exhale, fold. You can take your peace fingers to your big toes, bending the knees to achieve that. Inhale here and Lengthen against the bind, coming toward a flat back. As you exhale, fold deeply, drawing the head toward the legs, chest toward the legs. And then we'll release the bind, bend into the um, knees and rise all the way up to our extended mountain pose. Hands to the heart, Samastiti. Excellent. From here, we'll inhale, reaching the arms out and up to the sky. Exhale, swan dive, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, step back, left leg. This time, keep the knee lifted if it feels safe. You can use the blocks, framing the foot. As we inhale, we'll come to a mid lunge, lifting heart forward. As you exhale, lengthen into the right foot, flat back, this is pyramid pose. Inhale, mid lunge. Exhale, 
pyramid. One more. Inhale, mid lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Bend into the right foot. Remove those blocks. Plant the hands on the mat. Step the right foot back to meet the left. And now we're in full plank. So really keep the body rigid as a board. <clears throat> Inhaling here, you can drop knees at any time. Exhale, coming slightly forward, bending the elbows halfway down. So the elbows are at a right angle to the mat. And then we'll inhale, upward facing dog. Shoulders roll down the back, heart is lifted, knees are lifted, and all 10 toenails plug into the mat. As you exhale, lift the hips using core strength, rolling over the hands and feet, downward facing dog. Starting to build, feel heat in the body. You might notice any shifts in your breath, your heart rate, your body temperature. On the inhale, we'll lift the right leg to the sky. As you exhale, draw the right knee to the right shoulder and we're gonna roll forward to a plank shape. Inhale, three-legged dog, right leg lifts. Exhale, right knee to left elbow in this plank shape. Inhale, lift. Exhale, step the right foot all the way through, planting the blocks on either side of the foot. And then rest the left hand on your block. Inhale, right arm forward and up. This is our side angle, a mod a rotated side angle pose. For a challenge, you can lose the block. That's option one. You can tuck the right hand behind the hips for a shoulder opener. And to go even further, you might try extending the left arm. Breathing here, three deep breaths. And then we'll lower the hands, bend into the right leg, and we're gonna come all the way up to our high lunge. I like to bring hands to hips and bend the back knee to tuck my tailbone here. Roll the shoulders back and then extend the leg, gazes forward. And you might choose to lift the arms. Deep breath in. As you exhale, reach forward and down. I'm going to use my blocks again, lengthening into the right leg for pyramid pose. And you can try different heights of the blocks to see how that feels. We want the back to be flat, so no rounding forward. Breathing here, three deep breaths. You also might shorten the stance to bring the back heel further toward the mat. And then we'll bend into the right leg, remove the blocks, plant the palms, Step right foot back to meet the left. Sorry, <laughs> move the blocks to the top of the mat. And we're gonna take a big step forward and float the left leg. So this is our um, warrior three, supported warrior three. Breathing here, three breaths. I know the right leg is working. You've got this. And then we'll drop the right leg to meet the left. Breathing here in our flat, with our flat back, exhale, fold. Soft bend in the knees, inhale, rising. Exhale, hands to the heart. Left side, inhale, reaching out and up to the sky. Exhale, heart forward, swan dive, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Flat back, spine lengthens. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, step back, right foot, bringing the blocks to the mat, planting the palms and inhaling to a mid lunge. Exhale, lengthen into the left leg for pyramid pose. Inhale, mid lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Inhale, mid lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Inhale, bending into the leg, removing the blocks, hands to the mat, step back, plank, 
and move through vinyasa. Inhaling plank, exhale chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Returning to the breath. Scanning the body. Reminded of our dream and how we envision it. On the inhale, left leg rises to the sky. As you exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, left foot rises. Exhale, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, left foot rises, three-legged dog. And as we exhale, we step the foot forward, finding our blocks. And then we'll inhale, reaching the left arm forward, spinning up for our <clears throat> rotated side angle pose. So the shoulders are stacked one over the other. Options here, remove the block to deepen the stretch. Slide the left hand behind the hip to open the left shoulder. Reach the right arm forward, making this a balancing and core strengthening pose. Breathing wherever you are, three breaths. And then we'll return hands to blocks, reaching them down. Press into the ground with both feet. Gentle bend in the back leg. Let's bring hands to hips and rise up to our high lunge. And then roll shoulders back, extend the right leg back. And maybe we drop the hands back here and interlace the unusual way. Inhaling and letting it go. And then we'll reach the arms forward and up, finding our blocks, reaching down toward the ground, lengthening into the left leg for our pyramid pose. Again, you might change the setting of the blocks here to see how it feels. I like setting them higher at this point. Deep breath in, slow breath out. And then we'll bend into the left leg, plant the blocks at the top of the mat. And we're going to take a big step forward, floating the back leg for our modified warrior three. So the hips are facing the mat. We don't wanna be rolling um, in, and we don't wanna roll open with the hips. So the hips are squared to the mat. The gaze is down to keep the spine long. Core and legs are working. Breathing. And then we'll bring right foot to meet the left. Inhaling here with a flat back. Exhale, fold deeply. Slide the palms face up under the feet. Giving yourself a little massage of the hands, the feet and the wrists. On an inhale, lengthen against the bind, coming to a flat back. As you exhale, fold deeply, drawing the torso toward the legs, tailbone to the sky, head, neck, shoulders relax. And then we'll release the bind, bend softly into the legs and rise all the way up to our extended mountain pose. And then we bring hands to the heart, Samasti T. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit on in our next flow. So from here, let's inhale, reaching out and up to the sky. As you exhale, reach over to the right side. I'm gonna turn so you can see me. <clears throat> reaching to the right, I like to clasp my wrist with my right fingers. This is a side body stretch, gazing to the sky. And then make sure your butt hasn't started sticking out behind you. Tuck it in so that the core is still working. Deep breath in and let it go. Inhale to center, rolling shoulders down the back. 
Lengthen on the inhale. As you exhale, clasp the other wrist and reach it to the left, coming into a side body stretch on the other side. Getting heavy in the right foot so that you're really planted here. Finding length, gazing to the sky, heart spinning open, bum in line with the shoulders. Inhale, center. Exhale, open the arms and twist to the right. The hips stay pointed forward. And then we'll inhale to center. Exhale, opening the arms and twisting to the left. Inhale to center. From here, if you have a block, plant it between the legs. <clears throat> arms are raised to begin with. We're coming into chair pose. So we'll bend the legs deeply. Hands can come to the heart. I like to use the block because it helps press, it helps to keep the legs pressing toward one another without getting a knock, knock need. So to all 10 toes point forward, and I'm using the block, pressing legs together, hands at the heart. If you don't have the block, you can just have feet and knees and thighs pressed toward one another. You should be able to see all 10 toes. Deep breath here as you exhale, reach behind you and bring the torso horizontal to the mat. So downhill skier pose. You might interlace hands behind you or if you have the strap and you wanna use that, you can um, pull the, on the strap behind you. Inhale here, as you exhale, lengthen into the legs and fold forward, drawing the hands overhead, making sure to readjust feet to hips distance at this point. So opening up the shoulders a little more, breathing here. And then release any bind, release the strap. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, step back, left foot. And we're going to um, open into our twist on the inhale. Tucking the back arm, if you liked that before, maybe reaching forward, or you could set the right hand outside the right foot for a deeper twist. Breathing here. And then we'll plant the hand under shoulder, left hand. Inhale, reaching right arm forward and down, pressing into the feet, rising up to high lunge. Breathing here, feeling our strength, feeling our stability, and then reaching forward and down, coming into pyramid pose. Breathing here, legs are long. Hamstrings should be nice and loose by now. And maybe on the exhale, you fold deeply, allowing the torso to melt toward the right leg. Head can be heavy and loose. And then we'll bend into the right foot, planting the hands on the mat. Right foot steps back to meet the left. Move through vinyasa at your pace and your level. From down dog, we'll take a deep breath in and a big sigh out. Inhale, lifting right leg to the sky. As you exhale, let's bring the right knee to the left elbow and then extend that foot out, pressing the outer edge of the foot into the earth. From here, you can roll onto the inner edge of the left foot and open the arms. This is Fallen Star. Breathing here, three, feeling your strength, opening the hips, two, and one. Hands return to the mat, right knee bends, returns to three-legged dog, and then we step it all the way forward. From here, we'll spin the right arm open to our twist, one breath. 
On the next inhale, rising to high lunge, one breath. Exhale, finding pyramid pose. And here we're going to add on. So on an inhale, the right arm reaches forward and up. We're in a pyramid twist. Breathing for three breaths, stacking right shoulder over left. Legs are extended, core is engaged. Gaze can be high or at the foot whatever works better for your neck. And then we'll reach the arm forward and down, bending into the right leg. Find those blocks at the top of the mat. We're gonna step forward into this warrior three pose, soft bend in the knee. And then I'll, there's an option to come into our rotated half moon pose, the peak pose. So follow me, reach the right arm forward, and then we're gonna Spin it open, everything else stays right where it is. So this is a revolved side angle. Breathing, working. And then reach forward and down, bring left foot to meet the right. Flat back, lift, exhale, fold. Hang like a rag doll, hands to the elbows, bending the knees, head is heavy. Pressing into the feet, release your elbows and roll all the way up to the stand. Mountain pose. As we inhale, reach out and up. Bring hands to the heart and we'll sit in our chair. Breathing here, seeing all 10 toes, reaching the arms back, torso parallel to the mat for downhill skier, and then interlace hands the unusual way or take the strap. Inhale here, as you exhale, lengthen into the legs and fold forward, Uttanasana. Arms overhead, stretching the shoulders, if that feels safe. And then we'll release the bind, halfway lift to a flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, stepping the right foot back, reaching left arm forward and up for the twist. Going deeper here, if you'd like to, tucking the right hand behind the hips, reaching the right arm forward, or maybe reaching the right arm outside the left foot. So really spinning the heart up toward the sky, gaze is lifted, breath is flowing. And then we'll unwind ourselves, reaching forward and down, pressing into the legs, rising all the way up, high lunge. I know your legs are working. Breathing here, and then straightening into the left leg, coming into our pyramid pose. Sinking the back heel toward the mat, core is engaged, starting here with a, a flat back, and maybe on the exhale, folding toward that left leg. Relaxing head, releasing tension in the jaw, neck or shoulders. And then we'll bend into the right, left foot, plant the hands, step left foot back to meet the right, move through the vinyasa at your pace, your level. From down dog, we'll inhale, lifting left foot to the sky. Exhale, left knee to right elbow, and then extend it, that left leg long, coming to the outer edge of the foot. Roll to the inner edge of the right foot. And if you feel safe, lift the right arm. This is fallen star. Breathing here for three, 
Lifting the hips and heart, two. You got it, yogis, one. And then we return both hands to the mat, bend the left leg, send the left foot to the sky, and then draw it forward, planting it on the mat. Spinning open, rotated side angle, one breath here. And as we exhale, we'll rise all the way up to our high lunge. Exhale, reaching forward and down, straightening into the leg, maybe shortening the stance for pyramid. Breathing here. And then you might try the twist, taking the left arm forward and up, revolved pyramid. Three breaths, stacking the left arm over the right. So the arms and shoulders are in one straight line, perpendicular to the mat. And then we'll reach forward, bending into the left leg, find those blocks on their high setting, lift toward the warrior three shape. You can stay right here or go for the twist, reaching left arm forward, spinning open, revolved, half moon pose. Three breaths. And then we'll reach forward and down, stepping the right foot down to meet the left. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Let's toe heel the feet to the wide edges of the mat. Heels turn in, sending the hips down, coming into Malasana, garland pose. Rolling the head, releasing any tension in the neck. And then we'll plant the hands on the ground, straighten into your fold. <clears throat> walk, let's walk our feet back to downward facing dog, drop the knees and find child's pose. Returning to our full deep intentional breaths. Returning to our intention, to our vision, to our dream. We're going to slide ourselves forward onto the belly, extending the legs behind us and sending the forearms to the mat, elbows under shoulders, lifting the head to look forward. This is Sphinx pose. Pressing the hips down into the mat, all 10 toenails into the mat. Inhale here. Exhale, coming all the way down. Hands can be a pillow under the forehead. And then we'll extend the hands back behind us, palms face down. We're moving into our back bends. So we'll move toward locust pose. On the inhale, lift head, neck, shoulders, and then the hands. Breathing here, if it feels safe, you might try lifting the feet. Pressing down through the hips and pelvis, lifting heart, shoulders, and feet three breaths, trying to keep the feet tracked in a line with the hips. So you don't want the feet wider or narrower than the hips. And then as we exhale, melt into the mat, bringing forehead to the mat or turning to one cheek, whichever is more comfortable. We'll try that again. This time you might take the strap behind you or interlace fingers if you're able. If you're using the strap, you'll just reach it behind you, finding the distance between your hands that feels good. 
And then as you inhale, lift first, head, neck, shoulders, then lift the hands in their bind, and then the feet. Breathing here. If all of this is easy peasy, you might try bending the knees. And if you can reach the ankles without coming out of the shape, you can reach for the ankles, pressing ankles into the hands. This is bow pose. And then let's exhale, release everything to the mat. Keep the knees bent or bend them if you don't have it already. And just let the legs rock side to side. Releasing the low back. And then we'll extend legs down the mat. Turn the right toes out so the inner edge of the right foot comes toward the mat. From here, bend the right leg and draw it up toward hip height. So this is a hip opener for the right hip. Breathing here, the right foot is flexed, the toes point to the right side of the room. Three breaths, relaxing the low back, the shoulders. And then let's extend the right arm forward, lifting the head, slide the left arm under the left, the left arm under the right, rolling to the outer edge of the left shoulder and we're gonna spin onto our side. The right leg stays bent. And so now we're in our twist, uh, spinal twist. So the arms are in a T and both shoulders are on the mat. Breathing here, eyes can close. When you're ready, bring the right arm to meet the left and then scoot the left arm to make that head pillow. So you're bringing the torso back, the belly back to the mat. Extend the right leg long. Deep breath here, pressing pelvis into the mat. Exhale and rotate the left toes to the left, bringing the left inner edge of the foot toward the mat. And then we'll press the left, bend the left leg so that it comes toward the height of the hip if we were standing. Breathing here. Letting gravity help to open the hips. And then extend the left arm long, slide right arm under, rolling onto your right side. And then onto the back, the left arm extends in a T shape. The left leg is bent and we're in our spinal twist. You can support the knee with a block. Feeling the mat under the shoulders, softening here, maybe the eyes close. Scanning the body for any areas you might be holding tension. See if you can soften there. Wherever you are, let's um, bend the left leg so the left foot comes toward the left knee and we'll plant that foot on the mat rolling onto our backs. We're going to set up for our inversion here and I will cue you through shoulder stand but if you prefer to do um, a less um, rigorous inversion 
you can simply extend the legs to the sky. So that's a great inversion. If you'd like to take that, you can now. If you're following me into the shoulder stand, let's roll onto the right side, pressing ourselves up to find our blanket. I like to practice shoulder stand with a blanket. So I take my blanket and I have it folded so that it's maybe two inches thick at the thickest edge. And I bring that flat onto the mat and the top of that fold is going to align to the top of my shoulders. So I return lowering down onto the back, aligning shoulders to the top of the fold and my head is then flat on the mat. This simply gives a little bit of lift and protection to, for the neck. From there, planting palms next to the hips, I'm gonna press into the palms, knees are bent, and draw the knees toward the chest, and then use core strength and pressing into the mat to extend the legs and reach them overhead for plow pose. So this is the first step to coming into shoulder stand. If you're unable to achieve this shape, then shoulder stand is not for you today. And I encourage you to take the other version with legs extended, lying flat on the back. From here, if you're in plow, interlace fingers and draw the shoulders closer together. And then reach the hands for the low back, supporting the low back. Once you've got the support, you'll slowly start to lift the legs and press the hands into the low back. You want the legs to lift until they come so that ankles align directly over the hips. And your toes, <clears throat> your legs can be gently rolling inward toward one another. You should have space in the neck and chin so that you can roll the head easily. And if you don't, then gently come out. This should not be painful in any way. It is a challenging pose, but it should not cause any kind of pain. So if you feel pain, please gently come out the way you came in. Wherever you are, let's stay for four full deep inhales and slow, complete exhales. When you're ready, reach the toes overhead, returning to plow pose. Toes are on the mat. Arms extend, palms face down, and then we slowly roll down vertebrae by vertebrae, coming all the way to the mat. When you get there, you can let the soles of the feet come together and the knees open wide. You can actually, you might first roll off the mat to remove the blanket. So feet together, knees wide, and maybe you're supporting the knees here with blocks. This is reclined bound angle pose. The arms can open to a cactus shape or a T. Breathing here. Slowing down the breath. Noticing how the body feels. You might scan your body. Bringing awareness to areas of comfort and ease. and noticing any areas of tension or tenderness, sending those places a little bit of extra love. If you have any tension in the neck or shoulders, you might rock the head side to side.
And then we're going to set up for um, restorative Shavasana here. So bring the hands to the outer edges of the knees and draw the knees together, planting feet on the mat. We're going to remove the blocks, set them nearby, rolling onto one side and then pressing ourselves up to sit. So the, the posture that I'll offer for a restorative pose is a restorative fish pose. It's a heart opener. And I think given the theme and the day, um, it's appropriate that we think about opening our heart and opening our mind to possibility, focusing on a positive vision for the future. So with that in mind, I've taken one block and put it on the medium setting and that's gonna rest right under the skull. The other block I have on the flat setting and that will be right under my shoulders. If you do not have blocks, that's no problem. You can do a similar thing by stacking books or just using cushions. Either way, it's nice to have a soft surface under you. Um, so if you've got blocks or books, you might like to place a folded blanket over that. Then we're gonna come onto our hips and gently lower down, setting the head on the high setting. So if you have cushions, maybe you're just stacking uh, one extra cushion under the head. And then the shoulders are supported by the block and your shoulders open, rolling the palms face up. So this gives you that heart opening sensation. From here, you can keep the feet planted on the mat if that feels good, or you might try extending the legs long. Wherever you are, settle in to your heart opening posture. Deep breath in expanding the lungs, breathing into the belly, slow sigh out, melting into the earth. Eyes can gently close, drawing awareness to all of the places where the body is supported Focusing on full nourishing breath. And relaxing with each exhale. I'm going to read an excerpt of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, I Have a Dream speech that he delivered on August 28th of 1963. And I invite you to just open your heart and open your mind to his words and let them touch you in whatever way they might. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there is something that, that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold, which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? 
We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies heavy with the fatigue of travel cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating for whites only. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair, I say to you, my friends. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. This will be the day when all of God's creatures will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. You're welcome to stay in this restorative heart opening posture for Shavasana. If you'd like to change your posture, I welcome you to do that now, finding whatever is most comfortable for you today. Settling in to our final resting pose. Letting the sounds of MLK's words resonate in our hearts and minds. Embracing our own vision for a bright future. Shavasana.
You're welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like. If you're ready to bring practice to a close, then I invite you to bring small movement into your hands and feet. You might gently roll wrists and ankles. Keeping the eyes closed, remove any props, setting them aside. Slowly rolling onto your right side and pausing here in stillness. And then gently, slowly pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Eyes can stay closed. Lengthening the spine. Let's take a deep breath in, filling the body with nourishing air. Relaxing and exhaling, letting it go. We can bring hands to the heart in Anjali Mudra. Drawing our awareness again to our dream, to our vision. For a bright future. A day when all people of all genders, colors and creeds have equal opportunity to live their best life. You might focus for a moment on a sense of gratitude for what you have today what you have achieved, all your connections, your community, your environment. And I would like to extend my gratitude for you for practicing with me today. Namaste.